All right, guys, welcome back to video five in this Lumberjack Underground video. Let's go ahead in this episode. We are going to be creating the background entity and um, going over our sprite class that we're going to create and uh, also our uh, init function on the render module. So let's go ahead. Let's create a new file inside of our JS folder. Let's title it entities.js. And inside of that folder, we'll create this entities. Set equal to an object literal. Let's save that. Let's go over to our index folder, upload, download, bring in our script, importer script that we just created. Okay, let's go over to entities here. Again, we are going to have a init function start things off and let's go oh, I just noticed an error here um, I, I get I don't know why I do that out of habit that needs to be an equal sign not a colon save that let's go over to our game here after our input done in it we need to do entities dot init pass in data um, on this init we're passing in data even though we don't need it I want to save that that was on the input.js file and then entities here let's import the data as well it's just out of habit it's good practice to keep things consistent there okay um, inside of this entities what we're gonna do is I need to create our background so what I'll do is I'll go var background and I'm going to set it equal to an object. And in this object, I need an X, a Y, a width, a height, and also the sprite image location. So what we need to do is let's create a helpers object. And inside of that, let's create a function class. Okay. The sprite function, what is needed is we need an image to be passed in. Whenever we create a sprite, we need the source X, the source Y, the source width, and the source height. Just like that. Let's set this dot image equal to image. And we're basically just going to go through and set all of our values to things that are getting passed in. Oops, we're gonna see up here. Just like that. And lastly, the height. Just like so. Let me make sure those spell right, spell right, spell right. Perfect. So now that is an, this is a helper class. This is a class that we can instantiate and use over and over again without having to do this every single time. So for instance, on the background, I need a sprite. And I can set it to a new, and I can do entities dot helpers dot sprite, and now I can pass in those things that are necessary. So I have data here, and I have a, the sprite sheet that we'll be using. So I'll just pass in sprite sheet as the image. I need the source x, y, width, and height. So what that is is on our image. Let me see if I can pull it up here. We need the location. I've already done the calculations in Photoshop, so we don't have to do that. But if I zoom in here, I need, this is our background right here. So what I need is I need this location, the X and Y location of the starting point. And I also need how wide it is and how tall it is. So that's just for future reference if you're making your own game or whatever in the future. So I know that the X is zero, 
the y is 35 it's 256 by 200 and there we go now we have a sprite object a new sprite object that we just instantiated and what i'm going to do is i need an x a y and a width and height on this background so this isn't the source anymore this is going to be the target x y width and height that will go on our canvas so of course i want it to start in the top right corner so we'll do zero zero and then the width is going to be equal to what we have our width and height set on our canvas tag so 768 and 600. so we want it to fill the entire area of course just like that so now we have our background what we need to do is somehow get our background onto this data object so that we can have access to it in our render method our input or our render module so the way we do that is i can go data dot entities so i'm just going to create an empty object that we can start storing stuff so now what i'll do is i'll do data dot background and i'll set that equal to the background that we just created this guy right here all right perfect now what we can do is we can go over to our render file which we haven't created yet so let's go to our js folder let's create a new js file we'll call it render do our render equals an object of course it's going to have the init method on it like that and what we need to do is we need to render that background that we just created this guy onto our screen let's do this before we forget let's go over to here load in the script again guys the order absolutely matters so keep that in mind um, because if this has dependencies on this or that or or whatever is needed. Oh, this isn't entities again, we're doing render. There we go. Okay, now inside of render, what we're gonna do is we are going to create another, like we've been doing, keeping with the kind of the format that we've been doing is I need a helpers object where I can store all of our helper functions. So the first one, the first helper function that I'm gonna create is draw entity. So I'll be able to use this every single time that we need to draw something to the screen it'll just make it a lot quicker than having to re type out this function every single time okay so what i need is i need an entity whatever entity we're being passed in and then i need the context that it's drawing to whether it's the background or the foreground for instance and all we're going to do is we're going to take this context that we're getting passed into and on the context that we created over here in our game.js file right here one of the methods on there is uh, draw image. And this actually will allow us to draw to our canvas tag. So what gets passed in is an image. So we'll do entity dot sprite dot image. So whatever image is on our sprite class that we created. And then we need the source X, which is also going to be located like we just barely did this on the background, for instance. It's on the sprite object so if you come here you see we have the background but it's not on this background we don't have image anywhere in here but we do have it on this sprite down here so that's what we're referencing guys and the image that we're referencing is the one we're passing in here which is our sprite sheet so i hope that kind of starts to click for you guys but there's also an x sorry there's an x on there which is this guy here and here so for this case it would be zero so we'll pass in the uh, source X, this is what it is. And we need the same thing, but for the Y, entity.sprite.source Y. And we need the source width and the source height as well. Entity dot sprite dot source height right there. And then we'll need the actual target x, y, width, and height. And those are directly on the entity that we've created.
created for in this instance the background just like that Okay, perfect. So now we have that helper function. So when we call draw image, instead of having to do this every single time, we can just draw entity, pass in the entity and the context and it'll be drawn. So in this case, let's call, let's draw the background. What I'll do is I'll say render dot helpers dot draw entity and I'll pass in, of course, we need our data object. The entity is going to be data dot entities dot background. So we can get access to the guy that we just created. And then I'll pass in data dot canvas object, which I have the background context right there. And it's just that easy. Okay, let's save that. Let's call this init and let's make sure that our background is loading correctly. So we go over to our game here, right after this, the entities are created. Let's do render dot init, pass in data, save. Let's comment out this run game loop so we don't get any errors. And go ahead and open up your file and let's see if it's working. So something went wrong. Let's hit F12. And this is important, guys. It's part of the debugging process. So, okay, this is beautiful. <laughs> um, no, it's not beautiful, actually. I hate when this happens. There is no, no console error and nothing's showing up. So something's not getting called. Oh, I know what it is. <laughs> okay, this init, of course, to get our game going, everything's loading correctly, but this never gets called. We need to, that's the only thing that we need to call on the outside of it. Now, let's go back to our browser here. Let's refresh, and now we get an error. Okay, what we got here? Let's see. It says that audio underground theme dot, oh, dot JS. Okay, that's a problem. So, you guys probably were screaming at me when I was doing this earlier, like, no, it's not a JS file. It is an MP3 file. And if you were just copying blindly, then you wouldn't have caught that. <laughs> but I'm sure I've had some of you guys e email me be like, yeah, I was like, I knew that you were making a mistake at that point. Let's refresh. All right, we've got another issue here. Back down. Okay, another spelling issue. You guys were also probably screaming me at, screaming at me there. Back ground. Let's save refresh oh okay another spelling man i could not get that it's loading correctly though let me turn that down it's not annoying um beak round uh, where did i where would i have put another let's see what line that was on it's on entities.js background background oh my goodness okay yeah, sorry guys, I, I have a problem with typos, but there we go, let's refresh. Okay, another bug, this is good for you guys though. So he said, cannot read property sprite of undefined on render, the eighth line and render. So let's go here. Okay, so entity.sprite. If we have data.entities.background, there definitely should be a sprite. So let's see. Oh, look at this. Okay, we need to push this into the right location. So I forgot to do this. It's inside of our data entities object is a background. And that's where we're passing it. Okay, let's refresh that. And boom, there it is. No more errors. We have got our background loaded in. That is being drawn. It only gets drawn once, so it's not every tick and frame that it's having to work hard to redraw in the background. So we kind of optimize that. So yeah, guys, that is the end of this episode. In the next episode, we are gonna be creating the coin class and the locations, and then we're gonna be pushing them to an array so that we can then uh, go ahead and draw them to the screen because as you've seen in the intro, there's a bunch of coins that go throughout this
background and, and the point is the lumberjack needs to jump through it's the underground world of mario really but he needs to jump through and uh get all the coins so yeah guys thanks for sticking around let's go on and advance to the next video i'll see you there later